Operation of the Dimation begins with creating a library of programmed worksheets which can be run on the machine as jobs. To begin with, the programmer needs to already have DXF format drawings of their parts ready. These can be produced with most CAD systems. As we already have these drawings available for this example, we'll begin with a new worksheet and insert a part drawing into the workspace. The part can be dropped anywhere on the worksheet and then we can use the center selection on sheet command to automatically position the part to line up with the leading edge of the material. Next, we're going to allow the program to automatically place hole dies and lock punch dies for us. To do this, we'll use the auto insert holes command. As you can see, the dies are selected and positioned for us with a single click. Now we can use the auto position die command to create a nibble path using our rotary die. As you can see, we're able to specify gaps or extensions for each end of the selected line. This allows us to put tabs in corners or to extend past ends to ensure clean corners. To begin with, we're just going to place these on the end of our part so that we can use these dies for spacing our next move. Now that we have those in place, we can use the Move Selection from Point to Intersection command to create a spaced copy of our part to the right of the existing part. This is necessary because we're going to run this job from a coil and we need to not only program for a single part, but also for the next part. Zooming can be done easily with a mouse wheel even while running a command. After completing the task, we'll use the Zoom to Fit All command so that we can see the results. Now we can finish using the Auto Position Die command to nibble out the remainder of the part profile. This tool is simple to use and works with three point clicks. The first two define the endpoints of the line to use, and the third click determines which side of that line to place the dies on. The dialog box gives pinpoint control over the ends of the die placements, and the overlap is automatically spaced out to ensure a minimum overlap of equal spacing. Note that on the leading end, we entered a negative extension in order to have a leading tab. We've done this so that the cutout slug will be dragged out with the part and not pushed through the machine. As you'll see, we'll use a similar technique for the trailing slug. Next, we'll assign special die designation to the cutoff dies and the leading dies. The cutoff dies need to be identified because we're not using a shear cutoff in this worksheet. We simply draw a selection window around the trailing dies of the box end and then add those dies to the cutoff dies group. Next, we'll select all of the leading dies with a selection window and add them to the leading die group. This will ensure that the spacing of these dies will only happen once and after that the trailing dies will create this cutoff. This lets us tab the slug to the leading edge once, but then afterwards tab it differently. This is often necessary due to the nature of coil processing. Next, we're going to create some tabs in our nibble paths to make sure the slugs are held in place. We'll use the selection window tool to select four dies. There are various ways to create tabs, but for this example, we'll simply drag these off to the side and then reposition them with precision. Now that they are off on their own, we can use the selection window to reselect them and then use the move selection from point to point command to place them exactly end to end with the other dies. After putting them end to end, we can use the move selection in X or Y only command to nudge them vertically. This tool is similar to the ortho feature in AutoCAD. This completes our positioning of dies for this part. Now we'll finish up by using the part and die geometry to set some job parameters. The first is the trailing job offset. This number tells the job program where to repeat this worksheet when making multiple quantities. After this is done, we will set the trailing cutoff link, which tells the job program where to complete this part on the trailing end. For instance, on this worksheet, the nibbled out box on the trailing end won't be needed on the final part of the job. At this point, we should save this worksheet for later use. But for this example, we'll move straight to creating a job file which can be exported to the machine and ran in production. The job creation program begins with having an open worksheet and then simply confirms parameters and requests a job run quantity. After saving the job, it can be exported to the machine. On the machine, the job can be ran completely and then re-queued with a different quantity if necessary to make up for any damaged parts from the run.